Black February Heart Health Month. This morning we have some there he is. He's... that could save a life. For years, MSNBC correspondent Tremaine Lee has told other people's stories, but now he's telling his own. He was 38, seemingly healthy, with no family history or risk factors. Tremaine had no reason to suspect the pain in his chest was actually a heart attack, and that's exactly why he is speaking out now. How does it feel to represent not just MSNBC correspondent Tremaine Lee who has spent his career reporting stories of people who have survived and overcome trauma? But nearly two years ago, at age 38, he almost didn't live to tell his own story. To now be on this side telling this story, it is amazing uh, because we're not all as fortunate, and, I, and I'm cognizant of that. Growing up, Lee was athletic and relatively healthy. No history of heart disease in my family, uh, no high blood pressure, uh, high cholesterol, nothing. So Lee thought it was strange when he wasn't feeling well for three straight days in July 2017. I was actually at work. I felt tightness in my chest. That was that Monday. Uh, the next day, same thing, but I felt dizzy. I, I'd never felt that before. The day after, he started feeling better and shrugged it off. But at home that night, Lee says everything went from bad to worse. As soon as I lay down, probably a f just a few minutes, I felt this pressure building in my chest. Similar to what I felt in the days um, previous, but like way worse. It felt like someone had like jammed a, a, a volleyball in my chest and just pumped it and pumped it and pumped it. Um, cold sweat, dizziness, nausea. I thought I was going to throw up. And I, I was so disoriented, doubled over in bed, and then my wife got on the phone, immediately called 911. When paramedics arrived, Lee says the pain subsided and his vitals looked normal. But to be safe, he went to the hospital the next morning. It was there that he'll never forget what the doctor told him. He said, Mr. Lee, you're a lucky man. If you didn't make it when you did, you might not have survived. He said you had a heart attack. When you think about heart attack, it seems like an old man's disease. You don't think of who I saw myself as, as young and healthy and with the world at my fingertips. Every single day, I'm thankful to be here because I almost wasn't. Joining me now, joining all of us now, a colleague and a, and a dear friend as well, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist Tremaine Lee. Uh, glad you made it. Oh, Thank you. I'm glad you're Good made to be here. It. Take us back to, to when the doctor said what he just said there. When he said that I almost didn't make it, um, my first feeling was joy because I almost wasn't here, but I was. Yeah. I survived. I felt the kind of joy that you only experience a few times in life. That I dodged a bullet. And then it wasn't until the next day with my family, my wife, my brother, my sister, my mother, uh, where I made a joke with my wife. I said, you almost became a thousandaire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then it was funny, but then I looked at my mother and I broke down in tears sobbing because she almost had to collect death benefits for me. Mm. And that was the beginning of the journey when I first started to realize that there's a tall hill to climb and that I almost died, I'm alive, but that was just the beginning of it. Here's what's wild to me because, I mean, I feel like we've all had that moment where just something feels a little off yeah but who's got time to go to the er yeah. who's going to take it that next step you're young you're healthy you actually chose not to go to the er until the next day why did you decide now it's time so by the time the paramedics got there it was about 12 to 15 minutes after that doubling over in pain and my daughter had camp the next morning my wife had a work trip it just seemed inconvenient mm -hmm. as parents and husbands and wives we do that so often mm -hmm. it just seemed inconvenient i said i'll go tomorrow i think about that every now and then saying my goodness the hours matter if when you die half of the people die within that first hour so i didn't go until you know six seven hours later and wasn't in the cath lab for another four or five hours so i, I thank my lucky stars and i thank god that i made it because those minutes and hours they count but again we get busy and our priorities yep. shift and i want to how's your daughter she's six now she's wow. six years old six years old to wake up her, her up in the middle of the night and drag her to the hospital i just felt yeah. we totally understand so how 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 has this changed your life? What have you done differently now since this has happened? I mean, it's changed my, my life in so many ways. I'm probably the best version of Tremaine Lee ever in my life right now. <laughs> Seriously, coming from that, I think um, health-wise, I can't change what happened. Right? There's nothing I can do to change that night I had the heart attack. But I make choices every single day about being better and being stronger, being mentally and physically present. I change my diet, so I'm basically a vegetarian until 6, till 6 o'clock. So during <laughs> the day, it's grains and rice and vegetables. Wow. At night, some chicken, I'm good, or fish, yeah. I'm fine. Wow. You become a big runner, too. I'm, I'm running uh, almost every day. I 
try to get, um, you know, 12 to 15 miles mm -hmm. uh, during the weekend, a long run during the weekends, uh, but I'm more present. Yeah. And so I, I couldn't, again, change what happened, but I make choices every single day to be better. I want to bring in Dr. Uh, Dr. George Fernand. He's the chief of cardiology at NYU's Langone Hospital in, in Brooklyn. Good morning. Uh, thanks right. for coming in. Thank thanks, Dr. Fernand, for coming by. For folks who might be watching and listening uh, and, and wondering, you know, I've, I've been feeling this thing in my chest. I wonder if something's wrong. What should people know? What are some tips? So what are some things to keep an eye out for? It's important to understand that everybody perceives pain or discomfort differently. Mm -hmm. So classically, it's an exertional symptom. You're exerting yourself and all of a sudden you feel a twinge in your chest, whether it's a pressure, an ache, a tightness. Uh, that radiates maybe to the jaw or the arm. Um, sometimes it's just shortness of breath or even just dizziness. But it's an exertional sy sy symptom and, and you just don't feel right. And that's when you should seek help. But is there an age limit? I mean, I feel like if I have a little twinge, which I, I have sure. had, but I'm 37, I eat pretty healthy. It's like, do I really need to go to the doctor? Well, I think it's important that everybody goes to the doctor on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to educate yourself on how to eat right, how to exercise, and the signs and symptoms of just not heart attacks, but strokes, or anything that could be abnormal that should give you warning signs. But yes, it's important at any age. The youngest patient I ever had was 21. Oh, wow. Any age and any gender, too. Any age and any gender. And with women and um, with African Americans um, and Asian um, descent, the symptoms are sometimes Sometimes different oh. and not as recognized. Got it. Oh. Um, so you have to be careful. Useful information. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I did want to say one other thing. that I've gotten letters from people all across the country who are suffering with the, the trauma of it all and that you can take it head on. And sometimes we don't process it the right way, yeah. but recognize it. Take it head on. You are not a victim. You're a survivor. Mm -hmm. You're a survivor. Take that day and win. You're a survivor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That little girl is precious. She is. Yes. Very much. By the way, you can read a little bit more about those warning signs that you need to know and learn much, much more about heart health on our website today.com. We'll be right back.